the Kadal Fest stands for celebrating Adivasi and Dalit arts and literature. And it's all, it's all about um, bringing new audience to Dalit literature, which is the literature of people who used to be referred to as untouchables in India. And we are so pleased to be welcoming Kalyani today. I mean, I'll, I'll give, I'll give a, 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 big, a slightly better um, introduction. I just have a few um, mentions that I need to make. This is sponsored by the HRC and by my university, Nottingham Trent University, and by the university of my co-investigator, Judith Misrahi Barak, and her university is the University Paul Valéry Montpellier III. We started working uh, on a network on Dalit and Adivasi literatures a few years ago, and we had uh, events here at NAE before. <laughs> and, um, but this particular Kadal Fest series started in October in, um, at here at NAE. And then we had several really exciting festival events in Ranchi, in North India, in Goa, in Bangalore, in Hyderabad, and a five-day festival in Uruville. So these have been wonderful events, and we're really pleased. You know, it feels very neat that this whole festival is coming full circle. It started in Nottingham, this series, and now it's ending in Nottingham with Kalyani, and we are just so pleased. This is not the first time that Kalyani Takucharal, however, is in Nottingham. You know, Kalyani was mm. here in 2018, and we were really blown away by her work then, but hardly anything was available in English translation. And for those of you who cannot speak Bengali, I'm afraid I, I count among those of you, uh, then it's, it's really, it was really only accessible in short snippets of translation, but now new books have come out and we're really excited to show them. To you, well, we'll show them to you in, in a moment. <laughs> so um, we're really pleased because you will be the some of the first to hear Kalyani kind of read from her work. Kalyani will be reading from her work in Bengali, and the three of us will be reading it in English translation. But first, a few words um, about Kalyani Takwe Charal for those of you who don't know her. She's a formidable writer and feminist writer and uh, activist. She has edited a small uh, magazine and she has done so much research on her community, the Matua community, and she will tell us about it. She has published so many books, it's impossible to list. And so the only, you know, we only get snippets of this material in English translation, but they're really excellent translations now. And I'm kind of so pleased that we have one book you know, for sale here in the back, yeah, fresh yeah, yeah, from, yeah. yes. Yes, Andabil and some people it is called. It's a wonderful novel. The publisher um, referred to it as a plotless novel, and that comes fairly close. It's a, it's a novel unlike any that I have ever read, so I very warmly recommend it. It's not available, actually, at the moment, only here in this room, you know, from me, <laughs> for five pounds in cash, unfortunately. Then another recent anthology uh, that um, Kalyani has brought out is called Dalit Likika, by Sri Samia, and it's, that was actually the first book that came out, and it's testament to Kalyani's endeavor to not only champion her own work, but that of other Dalit women writers, you know, so this is a, it's a wonderful uh, edition, uh, wonderful collection of short stories. We don't have any for sale anymore, <laughs> I'm afraid. And then there is, um, we'll be reading today from a book that has actually not been published yet, it'll be published next, uh, next month by um, Tilted Access Press, and it's about, the, it's a collection of some of her poetry that she published over, that she wrote over, well, the last two decades mm -hmm. or so. Yeah, yeah, so really pleased that we kind of have this material here. And then we'll very briefly um, introduce our, <laughs> our co-moderator. Mm -hmm. Here on the side is Purna Chandra Naik. He's a doctoral student, or at the very end of it, he's just completing his PhD and he's also recently published um, a chapter in the Routledge Companion to Cars and Cinema. And this is Niraj Banka. Uh, he's a, an earlier journey on his PhD, but still in his second year and he's a specialist on um, Dalit cinema. So if you ever want some kind of films um, recommended to you, he'll <laughs> you can list many for you. So I think we'll get started now. Kalyani, do you want to give you a slight introduction to the people she feels kind of made her, 
or paved the way of her journey here to Nottingham. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I am very much grateful to come here, uh, and I am very much grateful to uh, the uh, Nottingham Trent University and the others uh, sponsor of this program, uh, and especially to Nichols. Uh, I uh, actually I came here. Uh, it is very difficult to me, and not only for me, just like. Uh, some other Dalit Adivasi uh, uh, girl, uh, and it is very difficult to come here. If some people do not come uh, before me, and their blessings uh, is not upon me, uh, I could not be here without blessings of some people. They are none but Horichand Thakur, born in 1812. Guruchand Thakur, 1846, and Baba Sahib Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, uh, 1891, uh, who was born. Um, Baba Sahib Dr. B. R. Ambedkar is the uh, father of Indian Constitution, who wrote, uh, he was the um, uh, mainly he established the constitution, not only the constitution, he uh, fight for the, um, uh, uh, pre, uh, the downturned people, untouchable people, and uh, uh, after that, and he has, uh, he has a long journey uh, to be Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Uh, Guru Chand Thakur is the son of Hari Chand Thakur. Both of them uh, fight for the upliftment of the untouchable Namashudras and other, uh, uh, others uh, downtrodden people of undivided Bengal. Uh, now that is Bangladesh. Hari Chand, uh, 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 Chand respects and fight to establish the women. Uh, women empowerment also when the Brahmin people married more than 100 women which is called Kulin Protha. At that time Horichan Thakur called for monogamy and he said Aknari Brahmachari you can live with only with one woman. And he also uh, encouraged the people for work culture. In Bengali, it is Hate Kam Mukhe Nam. You pray your God uh, through your mouth, but you work hard, uh, work hard and uh, not uh, live like a priest or pujari and not to be a unproductive people. Indian castes are identified by their own profession. Horichand himself changed his occupation. They are divided, these people are divided uh, with their own, own op, uh, separate, uh, different occupation. That uh, occupation, that erasing caste system, occupational mobility is required. Uh, he said, I am against Vedas the rule of Manus and Arya's uh, Shastras. Manu is that particular people who was born um, five or f three or five thousand years ago and he wrote a book that is Manu Shastra and where he says uh, so many hatred about women, about the lower caste, so called lower caste people. And uh, this Shatra, Horishan says, I do not, I don't, I don't uh, bother this type of uh, Shastras and he says a new type of uh, materialistic ideas through his Motua cult. But Guru Chand do not, the most important job that which is the master key to change the society and to free from all these things that is not but education. Only education can give you freedom. 
as because the lower caste people were prohibited to enter the education education center in india it was uh, they uh, come to uh, this right it was uh, before 150 years ago the uh, uh, the um, uh, downtrodden people come uh, untouchable people come to education and guru chand thakur like guru chand thakur jyoti rao phule they established schools and education centers for this untouchable people and not only guru chand they take help with the missionaries those who go uh, india and they take the missionaries and guru chand thakur takes the help from cs meet a missionary from australia and they uh, every in every cases the missionaries uh, give education but they converted them into christianity but in case of guru chand uh, the people do not converted economic development and make them politically guru chand spread the consciousness of the people for economic development and make them politically conscious or other political awareness their motto was against brahminical system and to respect women and movement for self respect and make so many schools for the backward classes People, classes people as well as for the women of that classes and they collected the, of that low uh, low land countryside first they started the class for the student in the cow shed and they collected the students from different villages by boat they lit the light for this society then mahapran jogendranath mandal 1994 uh, 194 uh, jn mandal along with some other educated namashudra boys came to politics and in service sector the father of indian constitution baba saheb dr b r ambedkar 1891 finally elected from bengal but actually he was from maharashtra and mr mandal was closely related with him in his political questions and making the political plans they included hindu code bill in indian constitution to establish women right for land guardianship maternity leave and so many others right and it was a discussion from 1950 on to 56 and dr ambedkar was bound to submit his resignation letter to leave the constitution assembly lastly the bill was passed and totally the ideas was the was from the brain of j n mondol and dr b r ambedkar and i am come here because of these great people's blessings next shall i shall yeah, i read yeah, some it, okay is so is it am, am i am i uh, audience uh, can understand what i you want to say yeah <laughs> <laughs> no it's it's great you know kalyani last time you know you you spoke in bengali and had everything translated so i think it's great that you yeah, <laughs> speaking you. to us directly yeah. in english so we really appreciate it Um, so Kalyani is a is a formidable researcher, and she really wants to make sure that you know her community, the Matua uh, religion, you know, gets so its fair due in 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 empowering women in India. And there are a few quotations that she from from Hari Chand, uh, from Guru Chand, um, the 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 guru of of this religion, um, just to exemplify you know what their what position a was. Bit, a yes, bit. very little. I'll just mm-hmm. do these two. Yeah. So um who chases other women over their own as sinful adulterers are they known and his spouse or hers is there alone to practice this is to be god's very own 
So this idea of monogamy was very important at the time, you know, because it, it empowered women. Because as you said, you know, before, if you were one of many, mm -hmm. then you would have even, even fewer chances to kind of get heard. And of course, um, the father of the Indian constitution, Baba Saheb Ambedkar, his role in, in trying to establish equality for women was really very important. And as you said, you know, it, it was a frustrating venture for him to kind of try and to get the Hindu code bill um, to make it law. And he even resigned over it you know, in, in frustration, in, in protest, in a way. And this is um, a short extract from Kalyani's own work you know, as a researcher and someone who wants to make people understand that you know, Ambedkar was also an important figure you know, in establishing yeah, women's yeah. kind of position. So the, tran the translation and brief discussion of Baba Saheb and that's Ambedkar's speeches delivered at various occasions on the aspect of women's rights is the main topic of this essay, which I'm not going to read, only a few sentences. <laughs> in this regard, he has highlighted the contribution of Buddha and Buddhism as well as you know, their fe the feminist potentials that their writings have. Out of these lectures, the one that are on the topic of women's positions and rights are the rise and fall of Hindu women, who was responsible for it, the woman and the counter-revolution, and the position of women in Hinduism and Buddhism. And these um, more research-related essays will be published soon by Orient Black Swan. Oh, no. right. Would we? Yeah. <laughs> I've messed up slightly the, <laughs> the order of things, haven't I? <laughs> Sorry, Purna. I have a question for Kalyani. So, like your family have changed their surname to Thakur because Thakur is a basically a upper caste surname, and uh, Kalyani's family and Kalyani belong to the ex untouchable. So, their kind of objective of changing surname to uh, upper caste surname, which is Thakur, and then uh, in expectation to kind of get rid of the social stigma and these other uh, caste based uh, atrocity and uh, the discrimination. But again, Kalyani added a surname uh, Ch Charal, which uh, again denote to a lower caste surname. So uh, how can you kind of a uh, little bit de describe about this? Actually, uh, my parents came from Bangladesh uh, after partition. And they, are, they, uh, they have another surname. My father's surname was Bishwas or Mondol, I don't know, uh, like so. And when the, the people of that particular village came here, all they changed their surname and most of them were Motua and they take the surname of that Thakur uh, because as uh, there is two type of uh, intention I think. Uh, one, they were, uh, uh, they left their land because of uh, um, uh, religious uh, um, uh, disharmony, because of uh, um, uh, communal riot, they came here. So, they were afraid of uh, that uh, next another uh, incident. So, they uh, thought we go to the um, new places and if people know me, uh, then uh, they will, how they will treat with us. So, they change this, they take this upper caste surname. For a veil, I like you for a veil and uh, uh, protecting, uh, protect uh, themselves uh, also. Um, but I uh, was uh, uh, faced uh, so many people say, You are uh, um, Tagore, are you Tagore, are you upper caste, you are Thakur, which type of Thakur? Then I wrote, uh, when I come to write Dalit literature, I think Dalit is uh, a Dalit writer has a self-identity and I am establishing my identity. I am Chadal, the word Chadal is come from Chandal, the name of Chandal and the Chadal was, is a abusing word by the upper caste people, the Bhadralok people use this for abusing that post, that uh, people. So I use this particular uh, word for establishing that I am Chadal, but I am not less than you. I am equal to you. Uh, 
Anirji, uh, thank you very much for that. Um, now you have come up this, with this uh, wonderful book. So I'll just um, read a passage from this book and then we can talk yeah. a little about yeah, 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 yeah. this book. So basically, uh, in this, um, at this point in the novel, uh, there's this uh, character, Sukha Moi. So he's, uh, he goes uh, fishing with his eldest uh, daughter and then they get a, quite a lot of fish and then they cook and then when they're eating, he kind of reminisces about his past life. Uh, so here we go. No matter whether you eat or starve. In the afternoon, Sukhamoy goes to the bill with an ucha, a small fishing net and a pot, a kuno. Kamal accompanies him. She wades through the neck deep water with her father. They manage a good uh, catch of uh, crabs, the freshwater fish, chuchro, and tiny prawns. Hot rice with a fresh curry of chuchro or crabs, cooked with nal, the stem of the lotus or brinjal is delicious. As night falls, Sukhamoy and his children sit down to eat and chat. That year, I went with Dada, big brother, to work on sowing trees. I remember how I worked hard the whole day, pulling at that saw. In the afternoon, the tree owners allowed us to sit in the courtyard close to the plinth of the house. I was so hungry, I could have eaten a mountain of rice. A woman from the family was serving the rice, but she would throw it down from such a height, most of, most have been, uh, must have been one and a half cubits. Some of the rice scattered around. A little later, she brought dal and the same thing happened. I did not know what to do. On the one hand, I was really hungry and tired, and on the other, I was fed up with the sewing. I couldn't control my temper. I picked up, picked up the banana leaf on which the food was being served, and I shouted, you Salah, fuck your rice, and I threw it away. I was so sad that I almost cried. How can they hate some human being so much? And then a Mia came. He asked for fire for his hookah, and she gave it to him. I have been this. I have seen this kind of things all my life. So this is uh, this is a moving uh, incident in the novel. In uh, in an otherwise uh, beautiful novel, in the sense that you don't kind of describe this kind of caste discrimination very often in the novel. So would you like to t tell yeah, us a little yeah, yeah, more I, about I, I, this uh, discrimination? On I, I I will say a little bit of the uh, about this. Uh, uh, the headlines uh, uh, in every every chapter I write uh, uh, folk uh, uh, songs, um, a line from Hori Lilam Rito, Richan Thakur books, or uh, speech of Guru Chan Thakur. Guru Chan Thakur says, Khao ba na khao, tate dukho nai, chile me shikha dao e yami chai. That means, no matter whether you eat or starve, but you educate your child. It was Guru Chantrakur's uh, speech. I, I, I mentioned here, khao ba na khao tate dukho nai. Then I, I, here is so many, uh, he says so many utensils and so many teeny um, um, fishes of uh, which are available in the bill. And we um, brought off uh, around a bill, we live there beside a bill and uh, the people of that uh, countryside and beside, uh, depending upon the bill, people live there. Uh, bill is uh, just like a uh, lake, a broad natural lake, where is there, where there is a long, long um, uh, water lily, so many fishes. The paddy also, there is one type of paddy that born, that grown into the that water. Uh, and uh, it is called Beel. Uh, the name of our Beel is Andhar Beel because it was very dark. There was many, uh, they, uh, that was very deep water and the length of the uh, water lily was uh, 8 feet or 9 feet. But now that Beel is dying, the, there is no water at all.
So, last of this novella I wrote about the whole economy system is like so, the river is dying, the water, water pond is dying, the bill is dying. So, and here the this particular portion I said about the the protagonist of this chapter of this this novella is Komolini, a little girl, a country girl, and she her nickname is Komol, and she went to with her father Shukhomoy to catch fish, and they collect those fishes, and it was a very delicious one and to for their feeding, and his father went to south at a Sundarbon area for the work of carpenter's type job and then he faces this type of he did recently earlier he did it i use the vernacular language also here and which is from the bangladesh joshu district dialect i use the dialect of joshu districts I am born in West Bengal, India, and I um, I talked with uh, that language in in our house. And when I go to township or schools, then I know quite better <laughs> language and written language I used to um, speak. That is. And here I also mentioned Motua cult in the in the whole book. I told Motua cult about Ostogan and the folk type, folk culture, and folk religion, and which I have seen in my childhood. And that the reflection of that childhood is in these books. It's uh, you. I know you, you. You talk so beautifully about the book, but I think what makes this book also really fascinating is that it's it's a book that has no central character. If anything, it's the beel, you know, the lake, and around which everything kind of um, all the the livelihood, everything depends on the beel. It's dependent on the beel. And it's it's like almost and like they, a character uh, itself. Always they are nostalgic. The people are nostalgic, and they remind their past country, past where they were previously they lived. Uh, and I, I had always their nostalgia. Uh, uh, before ending the book, I went to Bangladesh, and I went to those villages, my father's villages, my mother's villages, my grandfather's villages, and. I went there and I see there was a large bill and the whole and it was around a large number of villages. So many villages are situated around the bill. And, and maybe as context, you know, so the you you talk about people who off, who fled and uh, once India was partitioned. And a lot of you know your forefathers, you uh, mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. who came before you, um, they uh, they were fleeing from what was mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. East Pakistan to India, where there were communal riots. You know that that was the issue. And even though the way you write about this bill, you know, in some ways it also feels quite nostalgic and about a way of life that is gone. You know now that the bill has dried up. But you're also talking about people who themselves were always nostalgic <laughs> about another bill yes. that they had lost, you know, to um, yeah, yeah, to the partition. Shall we read so, another passage from the novel? No, we we can go. The, uh, go to the poems. Excellent. Yes, yeah, if if you want to read the novel anyway, you can you can get a copy. We've got some <laughs> at the back. Thank you. Uh, um, yes, now we can. Um, read some of the poems uh, you know rice rice is such a such a 
staple <laughs> subject, <laughs> not just food, <laughs> in the novel and in the poems. So uh, in this particular poem, you talk about rice. So uh, the title of the poem is Rice Slaves. As a result of the famine's cause and consequence, the king and his subjects confront each other. The king scatters some rice grains from his repository. His subjects begin to feed on the given grains and some are so engaged in licking their fingers that they grow quite unmindful of raising their cleansed fist to the skies in protest. Now Kalyaniji will read, read the same poem in I, Bangla. I read the same poem in Bangla. Onno dash. Durbhikir karo no falafal basuto raja o proja parusparir mukhumukhi. Raja tahar bhando hoiti kichu onno chitaya dilen. প্রজাগণ তাহা ভক্ষণ করিতে লাগিল কেহ কেহ নিজ হস্ত এমনই লেহন করিতে লাগিল যে তাহারা হাত তুলিয়া প্রতিবাদ করিতে ভুলিয়া গেল থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ আই ক্যান রিড দ্যানাদার পয়েম বাই ইউ ইটস কল দি ফাট ক্যাট দ্য ফাট ক্যাটস গেট অল দ্য ক্রিম সরি দ্য ফাট ক্যাটস গেট দ্য ক্রিম অলওয়েজ Uh, and uh, you kind of refer to Godra, Singur, Nandigram, Marijapi in this poem. So before I read this uh, English translation, yeah. would you like to speak a little about... Um, you read first. Okay, great. So I read the poem first then. The fat cats uh, get the cream, always. Forgive me, but I cannot stand like you at the back of this long procession and lend my voice. Those of you who seek to save the farmer's lands or campaign for industrialization, I wonder, did any of your 14 generations ever farm? To both of you, the farmer is a vote bank. Kindly do not confuse these simple-minded working class humans with your confounding theories. Do not bewilder them regarding their status. Let them think through their own problems. Those who do not know which grain grows from which seed or how many times the reaped grain must be steamed to make the rice edible. Those who have only lived off the fine grain rice harvested by these farmers, will those bourgeois revolutionaries please step aside? Revolutions may happen according to your whims, but the bullet hits the Nandigram villager, and it is the Nandigram resident who goes to jail. The Vadralok have never been hit by the bullets, and they never will be. They will receive medals when convenient, and later, when convenient, refuse the medals with great fanfare. But for those, but for whose progress and whose benefit? For those from Nandigar Gram, from Singur, for my kin, bereaved at Marijapi, I can do nothing but, let, but wet the pillow with tears. My people, when will you re realize that you are not of this land? Your vote, is all, your vote is all they care about. The longer you take to comprehend this, the more the lives that all, in all the riots, in all the battles that rage upon this land, it is only the Dalit and the Muslim who dies, be it Godra or Singhu or be it Nandigram. And meanwhile, the fat cats steal all the cream. Thank you, thank you. So would you like to read okay. the same poem in Bangla? And then can, I, can I read Bangla? Nepora doi mare chilo kal. Maap korben, ami apna der moto kono misiler pichone dadiye shochar hote parchina. Jara krishi jomi bachate, ba shilpayon chai chen, তাদের কারো চোদ্দ পুরুষে কি কেউ কৃষিকাজে ছিলেন দুজনেরই ভোট ব্যাংক কৃষক দয়া করে হাজার তত্ত্ব শুনিয়ে চিরকাল খেটে খাওয়া সাদামাটা মানুষগুলোর সব কিছু গুলিয়ে দেবেন না গুলিয়ে দেবেন না ওদের অবস্থান ওদের কথা ওদেরকেই ভাবতে দিন কেমন জো এলে ধান বোনা হয় কয় কাড়া হলে চাল খাওয়ার যোগ্য হয় যারা জানে না যারা চিরকাল কৃষকের তৈরি সরু চালের ভাত খেয়ে মানুষ সেই সব ভদ্রলোক বিপ্লবীরা দয়া করে ওখান থেকে সরে দাঁড়ান বিপ্লব হয় আপনাদের মর্জিতে গুলি খায় নন্দীগ্রামবাসী 
জেলেও যায় সেই নন্দীগ্রামের মানুষ ভদ্র লোকেদের কারো কোনো দিন গুলি লাগে না লাগেনি তারা প্রয়োজনে পদক পান আবার সময় বুঝে রবীন্দ্রানুগামী হয়ে তা গণরেটে ফেরত দেন এ সময় আর একবার প্রচারে আসা যায় এতকাল কি তারা চোখে ঠুলি পড়েছিলেন কার উন্নয়নে কে বড় হবে নন্দী গ্রামবাসী সিঙুরবাসী মৃত মরিচ ছাপিবাসী স্বজনেরা ঘরে বসে বালিশ ভেজানো ছাড়া কিছুই করতে পারি না আর কবে বুঝবে মাটির তুমি নও তোমার ভোটটাই বড় জরুরি ওদের চিনতে দেরি করলে আরও প্রাণ যাবে এদেশে সব যুদ্ধে সব দাঙ্গায় মরে শুধু দলি তার মুসলিম সে গোদরাই হোক আর সিঙুর নন্দী গ্রামই হোক মাঝখান থেকে নেপোরা দুই মেরে যায় সুন্দরবন জোন then uh, the people who came from bangladesh here they were sent to dandakarno camp and after that they were uh, they, uh, they were invited to return in bengal and they shifted to morichapi island they lived there 9 or 3 months after that government removed them and how they, they non cooperate the government with them they uh, stopped th- their drinking water they uh, stopped their uh, communication with other islands and the people who are died there a lot of people died and no media can cover this news and godra also godra is the place uh, there was a massacre uh, and uh, shingur is a place there was a massacre in uh, nandigram is a place and godra uh, at the godra uh, incident a uh, train was burned and so many muslim people so uh, died at that time and uh, uh, so i i we see in india basically in um, the dalit people and the muslim people minorities are uh, de- uh, victimized in any massacre and the cream on or, or others are the uh, uh, privileged persons uh, takes the cream from that uh, massacres Thank you very much. Now I can uh, read one more poem. Uh, the title of the poem is They Who Have No King. For 200 years you have tried to erase the names of Harichand, Guruchand. Today to their followers you hold out your vote beggar's hand. It fills me with contempt. How much longer will you deceive them? Wait, Matua brother, in the name of our Harichand Thakur, let not a single vote go elsewhere send this message to every door we want no plow no land first a king from amongst us let us let your roar be our votes our rule actually it is also the word of guru chand thakur je jati raja nai she jati ta janoy those are not alive who has the who those who have their own king who have their own king uh, actually i use uh, three slo- slogans here je jati raja nai she jati ta janoy that is the slogan of guru chand thakur uh, the communist slogan was uh, jomidar langoltar the land is whose who has his plow and uh, um, kashiram ji kashiram ji is the uh, um, um, after dr b r ambedkar he is the dalit leader mr kashiram ji and kashiram ji um, said vote hamara raj tumara nahi chalega nahi chalega 
because we are the voter but you are the ruler it's not uh, uh, continue it's not to be continued he said uh, so here i write in uh, i can ba uh, read bangla je jati raja nai 200 bochho dhore 200 years they try to erase the name of orichand guru chand uh, there is no, no, no we can't uh, read in our history book the name of orichand guru chand ambedkar you read uh, in the in the early early years we read the, um, the great man about uh, their life about their but uh, we do uh, there is uh, till date these uh, peoples are not uh, included in the uh, lower uh, uh, primary class syllabus no to these they are uh, they do not uh, give the chance there is this is the untouchability and this type of untouchability says untouchability within pen and paper Dusho bachor dhore mochar cheshta kore chho je naam hori chand guru chand. Aastar onugami dher vhide toma dher bhod vikkher haat. Ta motu azar a great bhod bank of India. Aastar dher onugami dher vhide toma dher bhod vikkher haat dhekhe vado ghenna hoi. Aar kato thaka be dher. Dadao motu abhai thakur ehr naame aaktao bhod chano jaya na onno khani. ঘরে ঘরে বার্তা এই পৌঁছে দাও আগে চাই না লাঙ্গল আর জমি আগে চাই রাজা তোমার হুঙ্কার হবে ভোট যার রাজা তার আই উইল রিড অ্যানাদার পোয়েম অফ কল্যাণী জি সো দিস ইজ ওয়ান অফ মাই পার্সোনাল ফেভারেট ফ্রম হার কালেকশন সো দ্য টাইটেল অফ দিস পোয়েম ইজ টুয়ার্ডস ইউ বাবা সাহেব বাবা সাহেব মিন্স ডক্টর বি আর আম্বেদকর So for long I watched a few flakes lying by the road. No rain or sun touched them or faded their colors. The people flowing by like an unending stream paid scant attention and so fearing termites would get to the flake stops. I hoisted them onto my shoulders and began walking and thence began the questions. But I lifted them up because you did not. I say and then I see, one by one, in slow but sure succession. More flakes get picked up from the street side and we begin to walk, which way lies the road. Clueless at first, there are hesitations and dethering some stray this way or that. Till finally we see it is in one direction that we all have to go. Thank you. It was uh, happened uh, um, last, uh, uh, the situation happened uh, uh, at, the, at a period when the communist leaders came to Mayabati. Mayabati, the leader of India, Bahujan Samas party, who is established by Kashiramji, previously I said about Kashiramji. Uh, the situation happened and Prakashkara, the uh, communist leader came to Mayamati to alliance the, uh, to make a government uh, with uh, alliance uh, communist and uh, Bahujan Samas party. And this uh, situation happened but not uh, fruitful the situation. Uh, and at that period, I think about the, uh, uh, the communist leaders, those who are Marxist and Marx, uh, who follows Marx philosophy, I think it is uh, no, only Marx philosophy is not applicable in India because it is a caste based society and Ambedkar's philosophy should be implemented there. And I think I write this on towards you Baba Shaheb the uh, um, society is going towards Baba Shaif because if uh, the Ambedkarism is implemented in India, then the Indian uh, um, people, those who are, are in uh, uh, lower position or uh, unprivileged position, they will be uplifted uh, because only Marx theory is not applicable, is not uh, uh, solve the problem. 
the problem will be solved if we applied Ambedkarism. So, I think the uh, it goes towards um, Baba Shaib. Dirghodin Thore Dekchilam Kichu Potaka Ache, Rod Brishti Joleu Kono Rongbodul Hoi Nitar, Pashdija Jonotar Brukhepone Shedike, Ogota Uye Dharar Hoi, Katetule J. Harte Shurukolam, Jonotar Shawal Shaiteke. Apnake Tulsilena Tayami Tulinilam, Airport the Kiakta Akta Kore. शकुले ही शे स्तूप थे के पौता का काधिनी ये हटते शुरू करे कि ये कौन दी के जाबे प्रथमे बुझते ना पेरे छत्रों भंग होए कि उनको इतस्तो तो घुटते था के और वो शे शे देखा जाए शकुलेर गोंतो बोशे एक ही दी के अनदर पोइम टाइटल इस चिट महल I belong to nowhere. I do not have any flag. No flag is raised here on 26th January, which is the Republic Day of India. I am a woman from Chit Mahal at the border of a broken Bengal. I belong to neither east nor west. Let me tell you, I do not have the right to vote. I do not have any state or leader. Ma is weeping, broken Ma. I am in between riots and religious fanatics from a no citizen's land. I am a woman from Chitmahal. Would you please listen to me? Would you please rejoin the hands? Would you please remove the barbed wire? Otherwise, give us the shelter called home. Give us each a flag to raise. Thank you. Can I read Bangla? Hmm. It, uh, John Dalini Kobita. Chualish. Kono desh nei, nei kono potaka amar. I have no flag. Chabbishe January kono potaka ore ni ekhane. Ami bashkata chit mohole me, bhanga bongir shimanai, na purbo na poshi me dadiye bolsi. Amar kono boat nei, nei kono raja. Ma kadze bhanga ma. Udike dharme tada. এদিকে বেনাগরিক মাঝখানে আমি ছিট মহলের মেয়ে বলছি বলছি মাটিটাকে জুড়ে দাও খুলে দাও কাটাতার অন্যথা বসত গড়ে হাতে হাতে দাও পতাকা Chitmahal is that place uh, which is uh, told no man's land. No man's land, some people live who are nearest to the border, they live there. And they are not recognized the citizen of that country, not this country. So, country is for people, people is for country. But uh, land, land, they, uh, land is not only for recognize a country, not uh, meaning in uh, not refer a country. Country means people, country means citizen. Thank you. I think the next next poem won't need <laughs> you you won't need any contextual knowledge for that. So the shoe society. Just as the foot inserts itself with care into the new leather shoe, feeling its way forward gingerly. Dear girl, make your own space within this society carefully, cautiously feeling your way forward, for it is as hard and inflexible as the shoe. If fortunate, you may find by your side a band-aid type, Baba or Big Bai. If not, then, within this hard leather society, you will have to remain blistered and burning as you navigate yet many more centuries. There is uh, a history before this uh, writing this poetry. I um, bought, uh, I purchased a new shoe 
and <laughs> it gave me very trouble and uh, my office was um, uh, 5 minutes there is uh, one yard uh, i live in a quarters and then i go to my office but i uh, when i uh, go to my seat uh, office uh, it was uh, 5 minutes away but i was um, the um, feel the how the pain is uh, <laughs> giving trouble to me uh, then uh, I um, uh, left my bags and I was, was sit there and I wrote this poetry. Juto Shamaj Pajamon Shokto Chamdar Jutor Notun Jutor Mototi Shantor Pone Jaiga Kurine O me Shamastao Temni Tide Jutor Veto Tarmoto Tomake Ku Shabdhan is Jaiga Kurinite Habe. Kopal bhalo to banded marka baba bhai pee jete paro. Nochet, a hard leather shamaje, tumake pushka, koda, nieti keteke, par hote hobe aro, koik shatabdi. So the last poem that we'll be reading before we, uh, you get the chance to ask questions is uh, one from the Horses series. You know, so you wrote a whole series of poems about horses, and this is called The Disobedient Society. The piteous broom tied at the waist wipes out the footprints of the untouchable, yet the dullet will not be wiped out from this land. Despite burning for a thousand years, so many are we. In this land where narrow communalism disguises the evils of caste, the docile, civilized humans go to their daily work or raise a storm of words in their teacups. So finally, I take to the busy streets, a bell fastened to my staff, taking the bridle of time in hand, I direct onto the right path, this disobedient, stubborn horse, this worm-eaten society. Actually, um, uh, everybody knows, uh, Indians, um, some people knows uh, the period of Peshwa and uh, Maratha uh, in Maharashtra, particularly the state Maharashtra, uh, the people live, uh, the untouchability was uh, so dangerous, the people takes a, a broom to in their back side that their footprint can be removed with that broom. They use that and they use another pot for spitting because that their spit will unholy the uh, um, uh, pollute the road, uh, road and uh, others. Uh, so, uh, so, I write about and in, in that case, if caste issues come, then the uh, communal issues, they uh, shows the communal issues uh, to suppress the caste issues or uh, to remove, uh, they shows uh, communalism come here because caste and communality is a religious violence and communal violence is different caste violence is different so when caste issues come they try to show the communal issues to suppress the communal issues caste issues uh, so, I, I write uh, no, thinking about that uh, um, particular type of uh, untouchability in Maharashtra and, uh, and you know the uh, Bhima Koregao incident where uh, it was in 1818, first uh, January, the um, um, uh, British uh, uh, soldier, the Maratha were British soldier and they fight against Peshwa and the Peshwas were uh, uh, victimed for that, uh, they were victimized that uh, battle and the uh, 
द मराठा द मराठा सोल्जर्स वायर अनटचेबल and who face this type of life just to give a little bit of context because uh, obviously the divide and rule policies kind of um, hyped and so on which actually happened but again a lot of caste discrimination was also happening and um, maratha regime in maharashtra uh, when uh, the british were fighting against the uh, peshwas who were the kind of brahmin the upper caste people who kind of uh, who discriminated a lot against dalits you know spitting even spitting is not allowed you know dalit has to kind of walk with the broom behind them so that they can wipe out their uh, footsteps even the footstep is they're so polluted and impure in the in the caste system even the footstep can be polluting speed can not only footstep shadow also shadow also can be polluting so bangla ta ami pori beara samaj nibibondher korun jhatati muche day asprishsher padochinno guli nischinno hoy na tobu hajar bochore pure এত দলিত দেশের বুকে যে দেশে সাম্প্রদায়িকতার আড়ালে ঢাকা পড়ে বর্ণবাদী বীজ হেঠ মুন্ড সভ্য মানুষেরা যায় নিত্যকার কাজে অথবা তুফান তোলে চায়ের টেবিলে অবশেষে ঘন্টা বেঁধে নেমে পড়ি নগরীর রাজপথে স্বয়ং হাতে নিয়ে সময়ের লাগামটা নিজেই নিয়ন্তা হয়ে সুপথে চালনা করি অশ বেয়ারা অশ্বরূপী এক গুয়ে ঘুণ ধরা সমাজটাকে So we have time for questions, if you have any. I'll be the roaming mic. <laughs> Thank you for your beautiful uh, work, you uh, your story and, and your poems. Uh, and um, I was trying through them to understand more the politics, uh, which you, you, you explained. Um, I heard you talk about the Communist Party and Marx. I understand the role of Marx and the Communist Party in the class struggle in, in the capitalist country. Uh, could you say more about the role of Marx and the Communist Party in the caste struggle um, in, in your situation? Uh, I think uh, caste uh, struggle is uh, that um, in case of uh, the people who are uh, the communist uh, activist or uh, they make uh, a community of women Shromojibi uh, Mohila, Shromojibi Mohila or progressive uh, women uh, an organization, but they are very much uh, op pressed or they do not uh, uh, access, uh, they do not uh, respect uh, uh, Ambedkar because they always uh, says they, he gave the reservation, he is the father of reservation and, and they do not uh, uh, um, value uh, him how Ambedkar, uh, his theory, his other struggle, his other writings, making a, how to make a state and um, uh, his uh, economy planning. Uh, nobody recognized Ambedkar and until now Ambedkar is, Ambedkar is not acceptable to the Indian mass people, till it. They do not accept Ambedkar. They are uh, their icon, iconic. Uh, they, they do not uh, recognize Ambedkar as their icon. And everybody, uh, they, the intellectual and upper caste uh, educated persons, they um, uh, shows. I, I wrote uh, somewhere in my autobiography, I uh, write about Marxism and the Bengali and Indian Marxist, about Indian Marxist, how they are uh, trying to um, save uh, uh, casteism through uh, um, uh, communal. Uh, uh, communism through communism, they sh the they sh uh, they actually they take communist uh, ideology, but the application is mono monos ideology. Their application, they are soft Brahmanical uh, types uh, or soft hin soft Hinduism. They encourage because all, they all encourage all type of puja. 
Durga Puja, Kali Puja, Saraswati Puja, all type of goddess, they, they believe all type of goddess. Marxism has no god. If, if I can add a little. Uh, and that is, that is soft Hinduism, I think. It's uh, lovely to hear from you, uh, particularly in Bengali, uh, because I think, because I'm Bengali myself, I can relate to those feelings and the words and everything. Uh, it's beautiful. Uh, what I felt, you are not only talking about the Dalit, you are talking about the sufferings of humans. That I felt uh, more strongly, in every sense. You are pulling out and highlighting those sufferings in various forms, whether it is because of starvation, because of some labor problem, or because of his girl, or no man's land, or some kind of honor, respect, every kind of thing. So that is, I felt, uh, very, very touching. And that is the main thing I feel I am taking home today uh, from all your th This is not only Dalit. This is the Dalit which is in the front, but behind it's all humans. Everywhere there is human sufferings, and you are highlighting those in many various forms that I felt. Thank you. Do you want to comment? <laughs> Actually, uh, um, uh, the um, scope of education has come to the Dalit. Uh, 150 years ago. So, those who are not educated and the, they are competing with those people who are thousands of thousands years educated. Because the uh, reservation, reservation facilities and to uplift their uh, the education facilities and it should be provided by the government. But now everything is uh, privatized and those people do not come to the light enlightenment and i said those people who are uh, before i said about harichand guruchand ambedkar phule if they uh, uplifted these people uh, this portion up to and I face, I face if I write about the sufferings of Dalits, about the Dalit great man, uh, no publishers will encourage me. But if I publish this in my own language with my own cost, because I am a Dalit writer, Dalit writer is a writer, is a publisher, is a seller of his own books. But if it is translated and it should be go to Amazon and so on, so on. <laughs> Are there any more questions? No, I mean, you can think about it because I have a few. <laughs> I have so many <laughs> romantic poetry also, but I feel these are very important and I, I, I like to uh, spread out these messages to a, a great audience too. Yeah, yeah. Wait. Yeah, I, I think my questions are quite basic because um, really I don't, I think I understand a little bit about the car system, I think. But the, we have to go to some basic things, such as, um, I think my, like, I've heard that sometimes you, you, people can tell through the surname, the caste system, I don't know, you hear this, you hear that. I don't know if those are things that are true or what they are. And um, I mean, I, I don't know, you, you've explained what it looks like, but I think I'd like to know, um, do the Dalit, are, are the, are the Dalit, are you able to live among the other people, the, the other castes? Do you, can you live among them? Can you, can you, can you, do, are your houses among them? Are your villages among them? Or are they, are you kept in a particular area? Is that where you live? Um, I suppose on a, and, and the education, you know, is it possible for you to go to university? I mean, is that possible for you as a group? Um, because you're here, and that's a great thing. Um, 
do you have the opportunity as a people to go to university, to go to, to study, to go to university? And when you do that, do the other groups, the other castes, do they still continue to treat you with, diffi with, uh, with, uh, with, with difficulty, with, 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 I won't say contempt, but do they still continue to treat you, even now that you are now educated, gone to university, done this, done that, out in society, can the other groups still treat, what does it, you know, I, just, I suppose I want to see what it looks like, you know? We have to read your book. <laughs> I will read your book. Thank you. Actually, uh, in case of caste uh, system uh, or caste questions, if you pre, uh, re, uh, say about caste, caste questions, then the gender questions come. And uh, the caste, uh, um, the, um, gen in case of gender, then transgender, then other LGBTQs, these all problems uh, come uh, there. But if you think about the uh, proletariat, the Indian proletariats are those people who are related with the productivity. Every caste has his own occupations. That is uh, fishing, they are jele, they are known as jele. That it is leather work, there are mochi. There is scavenging method, cultivating nomashudros, pondokotriyo, or boating, jaliya koi So, um, 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 make um, potteries, pal, uh, weaving, tati. Every people has uh, their separate. Uh, occupation, separate jobs, separate, they work things, and all they are productive peoples. So, in the la um, language of uh, Marx, they are proletariat. So, Ambedkarite's theory is not applicable in this country. The improvement, the development never be. Never. Education. education, education must. Education is the master key to uh, the, the remove from this situation, to uh, free from this condition. The only way to educate, educate, educate. And Ambedkar said, educate, agitate, and organize. It was a big question, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm wondering, do, do the two of you want to maybe add something yeah. to this? Because it's, it's, it's vast, you know, we could spend yeah. hours talking yeah. about context, but I think it still, maybe you still want to yeah. add something. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a big question, and uh, yes. Uh, yes, uh, uh, living spaces, particularly in villages, you have all these segregated areas. Uh, so basically, uh, Dalit community, they're very much kind of segregated in a stigmatized area. And, um, but that kind of also goes into cities as well. They, uh, when they kind of travel from villages to cities, they also kind of end up in slums. So in a way, kind of urban space um, is also segregated. But again, in the urban areas, somehow the caste discrimination kind of because of, because in villages, you don't have much bargaining power because mo most of the time you it's like agrarian rural economy you are kind of dependent upon the upper caste for your own survival but in cities that kind of that uh, power dynamic changes a little so even if you live in slums uh, you have little bargaining power but the caste discrimination continues uh, as far as higher education is concerned i mean slowly slowly uh, dalits have started uh, getting education because of she referred to the res reservation and so on so basically Reservation is uh, similar to the affirmative action. And the trade union, trade union leaders uh, denied, they opposed uh, uh, in uh, service sector uh, reservation. And uh, because, uh, uh, as a result of that, the government make all, most of the sector uh, is privatized. Mm. So there is no question of reservation. Yeah. Uh, government has no responsibilities. Yeah. 
So basically, yeah, privatization. I, right? ar I arose the questions in my service sector and I fought for a long time. Then I gave <laughs> volunteer return resignation from my uh, service. Yeah. I came from, uh, after a long period of uh, fighting. I, I, I then left from there and I gave my uh, um, resignation to the service. There is um, um, about reserve, uh, reservation uh, issues. Nobody agreed. Nobody agreed. The um, the field is not uh, prepared to uh, accept the uh, these questions. And uh, the um, I, I said previously, I said they do not uh, uh, ready to uh, recognize Ambedkar as their icon. They are not ready. But the communist uh, the, uh, um, uh, revolutionaries uh, says about um, uh, Luther King, about um, um, Fidel Castro, about uh, Che Guevara, about uh, they supplies the theory from outside, but not <laughs> within. Just a little bit of context. Reservation is basically a certain number of seats are reserved for Dalit community students to study in uh, universities and so on. Do you want to add anything? <laughs> yeah, like Purna already talked about how the condition of Dalit still. Mandela, uh, Mandela, yes, I, I left Mandela. Mm. Because when we are uh, university student, my m m friends, uh, we we also go that um, um, uh, 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 rally about um, um, Mandela's Mandela's relief. Mandela was relieved then when I was a university student. Uh, but uh, my those friends do, till date, none of the higher educated people can say about Ambedkar for five minutes. This is the situation. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, the issue uh, in the higher education is actually more complicated because every time you see somebody from the backward communities come uh, on top of something um, as a vice chancellor or, or come to a position, he is naturally seen as someone who has snatched away something from somebody who is deserving from the upper caste. Uh, it's not, it, nobody recognizes that he deserves to be there or that he is a talented person, he has something in it. And this whole anti-reservation, uh, you know, the, the kind of sentiments that's going on in India, which is also being uh, really, really, uh, the, uh, and the ruling party is actually feasting on it because they are also, um, they also propagate upper caste Hindu politics and the anti-reservation sentiments uh, is that hard that it is actually taken out on those people who come up from such backgrounds. So the higher education, say if you look at the most elite institutions, uh, no, no Dalit person is actually on the top of anything if you look at it. And even if they manage to come up, it's never recognized as a deserving thing that has happened. Say you, institutions like IITs or IIMs, which are like the elite cream institutions, or including in the, res the research institutions like say Center for Development, where I have worked several years, they don't fill those positions that are reserved for SESTs. So that's a, that's a conscious decision not to bring them in and to not recognize them. So um, I don't think uh, it, you know, giving them opportunity or reservation naturally translates to recognition. It does not. So now the, the whole, uh, the contention is that they're snatching away something from the upper caste Hindus who are actually the deserving lot. And, and they even say that more students go out of India uh, to pursue education because they cannot find opportunities in India, which is not true which is actually not true because the reservation is about like 2% of the jobs in the entire country. Say the private sector is all the more casteist than the government sector, to be frank. The MNCs, no scheduled caste, scheduled tribe people go to the top of any MNC in India. Say look at Sundar Pichai or Indar Anui, they're all from upper caste Hindu families. So it does not just naturally translate into anything good or, you know, like what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, thank you. Do you have any more questions? If 
not, I'll, I'll, I'll take, <laughs> I'll take the opportunity then and ask one more question about this novel that I really love so much. You know, because earlier we had a conversation and you said it took you years, you know, to write this novel. And I mean, reading it is really quite a unique experience because we often train to look for central characters. And I mean, there is a girl, you know, who we Isn't see that? growing up, of course. But there are so many names thrown in, and in some ways you are immersed in this lifestyle. You read names and names of different types of fish, you know. <laughs> you know, you, you can't understand them, but it doesn't matter. You know, I wouldn't know <laughs> any, <laughs> I don't know that many fish names in any language. And uh, names of different forms of paddy, and you really get immersed in, into a lifestyle, you know, that, as you said, has vanished. So it's such a, it seems that the environment has really sort of infused the structure of the text in a way that you really can feel what it was like, you know, to live this lifestyle, even though it's so removed, you know, from everything I would know. But it also took you a long time to write it. So can you tell us a bit more uh, about uh, it? How I, you I developed it? I have taken it? 10 years to write this one. 10 years as uh, a production. Tell us why. How did you go about it? Why did it take so long? <laughs> uh, actually, I write um, uh, when spontaneously the writings come. Uh, otherwise, I don't uh, write or uh, any order or uh, every, anyone, anybody give demands and I could not write any writings uh, as per demand. Uh, so uh, I, uh, I have write not more much uh, writings. I have uh, very little bit of uh, this type of four or five poetry books and I, I uh, actually I uh, uh, open, uh, uh, I will only say uh, in uh, Bengali this uh, particular uh, one because uh, India has uh, now, uh, India has got uh, uh, Adivashi um, uh, president, but this is an exception because Adivashi peoples are not come to the light and exception is not example. We can give example that Adivashi is, uh, there is a, um, a um, president in India is uh, Adivashi. So all Adivashis are become um, developed, become educated, become enlightened. Uh, not only that, at this, this period, a little boy who has taken water from a um, um, jagari from a Peach, what are you Peacher from a peacher pot, water pot, and his teacher bite him so much. His name is it, the picture was viral. That is Indra Meghwal, and that boy was died after some, some days because he is untouchable and he touched the picture. Now it is, now it is. This is a two, two months uh, back uh, incident, two, three months b before it happens. So the government says, Amrito Ajadi, the 75 years of independent, to Ajadi ka Amrito, the Mrit Mahot shop, to Ami Bangla Tech to Boli. Jeshishu Bhumiye Oi Potakar Niche, Fulo Chog, Janotomadir Ghinar Pahad. Hi, Omrito Ajadi, Dubea Chomrito Mahot Shabe. Upohar Dio Chobote, Rashtropotiak, Tobu Ochut Thake Motki Dijol, Trishna Toshishur Lashe Pashe, Omrito Chabe Mitesedesh. English. Okay, so uh, we're going to read that uh, the translated one. That child who lays beneath the tree collar with swollen eyes, resembling the mountain of hatred that you possess. Alas, Amrit Azadi, you remain submerged in futile festivities. Thank you, nation, for bestowing us with the Adivasi president. Adivasi president, Adivasi basically means indigenous, indigenous president. Untouchable though, a pitcher of water, 
Beside the corpse of the th thirsty child, the nation celebrates its Amrit Utsav. So, well, thank you. Thank you very much for listening. And thank you, Mel and NAE team. And thank you, Alan, for recording. As always, it is going to go up on our uh, YouTube channel if you're interested. So I just want to kind of one more round of applause for Kalyani coming all the way from Calcutta. Thank you, Vidya. Thank you, thank you.